Hello, everyone. Welcome into Above My Pay Grade. My name is Eric. If you could like this video, share this video out. It really helps the channel grow. Thanks a bunch. As I've said before, the auto loan industry, when you hand out loans, when you tell people they don't have to pay on their loans during the uh, whooping cough, and uh, you hand out loans based off STEMI checks, a lot of those loans are going to go bad. So let's take a look at this article here from Zero Hedge, which kind of lays out that we're having a mass, some massive problems in the auto loan market. Okay, auto loan delinquencies hit 10-year high as we're going into a recession. Apparently, that recession hasn't started already. I believe we haven't seen the worst of it, not even close. Um, but people are not paying on their car loans. It says here, auto loan delinquencies have risen to the highest level in 10 years, according to TransUnion. Consumers still want to stay current as best they can, but it's just this inflationary envir environment is making it challenging. It leaves fewer dollars in their pocket to make auto loan payments because they've got to pay more for eggs, milk, and other things. And the question is, is this going to get worse or is it going to get better? Um, where does the inflation come from? Uh, people can choose to not spend money on things like a new iPad, but they really can't uh, choose to do that when it comes to energy and food. And where's the mo most of the inflation coming from? Energy and food. Okay. Further reading. With loans, uh, uh, with loan accommodation programs implemented during the pandemic, once again, I've said this a thousand times, we basically artificially said reality doesn't exist during, during the pandemic with home loans and auto loans, and we just paused those student loans as, as well. And uh, as those loans start to come back online, meaning you have to pay them, um, and keeping in mind student loans start back up in January, um, people have been living high on the hog uh, and not paying off their loans. This doesn't apply to everybody, but they've been living as if these loans don't exist, and all of a sudden they come due again. And uh, methinks people would have had a different perspective on lockdowns if reality hit them in the pocketbook right away. Okay. But the government came in and said, let's just pause all this stuff. Um, and just delayed the inevitable for the reading. Some borrowers managed to avoid delinquency because of those programs. As those programs have ended, delinquencies have spiked. I know. Okay. Who could, who didn't see this coming? <laughs> Everybody did. Um, it's just annoying that central planners come in and say, hey, we'll just pause this. And uh, it's as if reality doesn't exist. And they, they forget about human nature, um, which is to spend money if they have it. And then these loans come due again and uh, these people can't pay them. What do you know? The merchant told CNBC that these programs push some delinquencies into the future. Yes. And made them worse in the future. According to TransUnion, 200,000 borrowers who took advantage of the pandemic era auto loan accommodation programs are now listed as 60 day delinquent. And uh, who's the counterparty to these loans, right? So they take out these loans. If they can't, if, if they can't pay them off, um, a car is not like a house. And even in the housing market, um, this could be the case. But what I, what I mean by that is in 2020 and 2021, the used car market, people were paying way over what they should have paid for the car. And so they took out this loan that doesn't even compare to the actual vehicle's value. And then the bank uh, repossesses the car. And can they sell it for what is owed on it? The answer is no. So the counterparties are going to take a hit on this too. That, those counterparties being banks. Um. For the reading, interest rates on used vehicle loans average 9.7%, which is insane as the Fed raises interest rates. Combined with rising costs of both new and used vehicles, along with rising fuel prices, the cost of owning a car continues to rise dramatically. Um, and people in the lower economic bracket, and then it goes up the ladder, it's, um, and I've noticed this in my own life, it's, is the juice even worth the squeeze in the low, lower economic rung? Like you're paying this much just to get to work. Um, and it takes up half your paycheck just to get to work because of owning a car is so expensive. Again, this is what the Fed is doing. They're lowering the standard of living for everybody across the board. Merchant told CNBC that the rise in unemployment could create a bigger jump in auto delinquencies. And it's coming. Wait for it. And if you're a person who 
uh, wants to buy a car, um, there's going to be massive opportunity uh, on these repossessed vehicles. If we get into a position where unemployment starts to be a challenge in the United States, uh, aka unemployment increases, that is when the industry will really start to be concerned about consumers' ability to pay their auto loans. It's coming 2023, in my humble opinion. We haven't even seen uh, the worst of uh, what's working through the economy. As you raise rates, um, typically it takes six months to nine months to really feel the effects of the rates being raised. Uh, by the Federal Reserve, because it has to work its way through the system. And uh, therefore, as they keep raising rates, the pain's going to get worse and worse and worse. Um, I just think uh, a lot of people, unfortunately, because of government programs, once again, you can almost always see a through line uh, with student loans is a big one. Uh, home loans in 2008, government comes in and say, everyone should own a home. And the reality is, again, they forget about the first rule of economics, scarcity. Okay, so um, if you pretend that value is just a, this ethereal thing and the government comes in and prints money, which makes things less valuable because the money printer means there's more dollars in the system, um, it's distorted. And I, I think we're just at the, at the start of those distortions, in my humble opinion, uh, weeding themselves out into the economy. I'm going to do a video later today about what's going on with uh, Sam Bankman Freed and FTX, because it is very interesting and it doesn't just apply to the crypto market. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. See you guys in the next one. Peace.